Hey everybody, welcome to today's misadventures of Peps. I was hoping to paint some alien figures. Completely have run out of time, so I've grabbed this little guy instead. Bro Jaws from the ABC Warriors. He came second in the community paint poll, which should be live. You've got like a few more hours before I decide who the winner is. Zoomed back on me. So yeah, we're going to paint him today. Sorry, no aliens. Instead, we're getting this. Enjoy. So, who is Rojaws? Rojaws is an arch archaic, anti-authoritarian character in the 2000 AD strips Robusters, Nemesis the Warlock, and of course, ABC Warriors. Originally named Federal Recycling and Environmental Droid 2-L, he was a sewage robot decommissioned because of faulty language circuits. This foul-mouthed little droid, in every sense, as he ate everybody's uh, poops and rubbish. He was sold to Howard Quartz's Robusters organization and found himself a new career as a rescue worker. Rojorts helped to save quite a few people's lives, but very rarely received any thanks or recognition for his efforts. He wasn't paid either because he was technically a piece of equipment. Eventually, Quartz decided to close the operation down and scrap the droids working for it alongside longtime partner Hammerstein. Rojaws led most of his colleagues in a bid for freedom, which saw them successfully flee Earth for a new life on the robot free world. Centuries later, Rojaws, now working as a hotel porter in the Gothic Empire, was thrown into the service of Nemesis the Warlock and became friends with his familiar Gobbledonk. Through Nemesis, he was reunited with Hammerstein and his ABC Warriors. In recent years, he has been working at the College of Chaos run by the warrior Deadlock. He has the following abilities. His jaws are incredibly strong, as is his stomach. He can operate underwater and see an infrared. He possibly has superhuman strength, and he doesn't seem to be hyper-intelligent or have a tactical mind of a war bot, but he can compensate for this with crazy amounts of courage, cheerful determination, and a rather shrewd understanding of human and robot natures, along with his disgusting foul mouth. He usually has a shovel, extendable arms, water jet thrusters, and that's about it. He has his teeth, caustic foam for unblocking drains, and sometimes for fighting alligators. He's such a silly little model. I really like him. You can actually buy him from Warlord Games in obviously the ABC Warrior box sets or by using your collected medals if you've got any of them saved up. You can treat yourself to this little model. To kick things off, we started off with obviously a white primer on the model and I hope you'd have seen it. The grim black speed paint was the first one. I really watered this down, which you can now see. I probably overwatered it by the time I reached the mouth and the eyes. But it works. It's very. It's going to come out very dark grey, which is what I wanted. I didn't want to use uh, Gravelord grey because I'm going to use that on the base. But I wanted something that wasn't completely black, but a good solid dark grey colour. And I think I've achieved that. I'm just carefully trying to go around the teeth of uh, road jaws. And there you go. That was a nice easy step. And my hat is now sneaking into the picture as I try and focus on getting the word tax coloured in on his badge. I'm also going to hit up his um, stomach area, abdomen, whatever those section is on a robot. I want to just darken that down, give me some uh, colour variation when I come to do his actual body. His body caused me a lot of trouble, because he is obviously green. Um... In some pictures he's a dark green, in others he's quite a vibrant green. I decided to go a different route with my green, which we'll see in a minute. But my idea was that he is in the sewers quite a lot. He's going to be around sickly stuff in my opinion, so I wanted a green that represented that a bit better than his traditional greens. So hopefully you'll enjoy that when we get to it. And as always, just take a minute to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Drop me a comment, say hi. Uh, I don't know. Stick a... Let's find something funny. What's funny in the uh, 
in the emotes these days. You know what, let's keep it simple. Drop me the recycle logo and I'll say hi. So as far as this stage is concerned with the aerial, we are going to be pretty much done. This is a fiddly little bit. I'm using a tiny brush today because I want to try and be as neat as possible. But damn, this aerial feels tiny and made my paintbrush feel absolutely massive. Right, there we go. Let's put that down, let it dry, and we will be back for stage two, which was actually the Grave Lord Grey going on the base. It wasn't very exciting, so I didn't bother sharing that with you. I then grabbed the Runic Grey, and we are going to use this on his teeth. I am trying out a new camera lens. It's very much zoomed in closer. The camera is quite far away, which was why I was able to stick my head under the lamp right now as I'm painting the teeth in. Ugh. In future, I will not wear a baseball cap so that that peak does not lean in like that. But yeah, it's a good two foot away from the model. And I'm still working out the focal depth. So he's a little bit blurry at the moment. But I get much better pictures than the uh, the stock lens. I managed to pick up this lens in a sale, so it didn't cost too much, which was very nice indeed, because I, I want to save my money for miniatures. But yeah, this nice easy step, this is the only area we're going to use the runic grate, and I'm going to make sure I get all his teeth in nice and cleanly. Not make too much of a mess. I do apologize for my baseball cap being in the picture. And there we go. These teeth are in. That's pretty much it for the greys now. There is no more grey, which makes me very happy. Now for the main color, the green. As I mentioned, there was a part of me that was going to pick something like a camo green or an absolution green. Have that strong, bold green. But instead, I went for malagant green. Good old malagant green. Usually a sickly color. Uh, you'd probably use it on, say, Demons of Nurgle. Uh, zombies, that kind of stuff. I decided I was going to use it on him. It kind of makes me think of when you're very sick and your, uh, your poop changes color on you. This kind of makes me think of that color. It's also going to allow me later on to build up some rust stains on him when I use some yellow and brown speed paints just to add a bit of detail to him. So this will make a very nice solid base. At this stage I am thinking of putting a brown wash on it to darken it down because I'm worried it might come out a bit bright. We'll see once it's dried where my mind's going to go with it. But this takes a while because I've got to carefully go around the model. So we're going to jump forward a bit and I'll catch you in a minute. Right, the green is now dried. You've obviously hit like to subscribe all that crap and dropped me a comment, which I truly appreciate. And I then picked up the fire giant orange, which I'm going to use on his eye lenses. If I can actually get enough on my brush for it to run off. I hate doing eyes. They're so fiddly. Either comes out looking terrible or I somehow fluke it, which I think I've managed to fluke it on this one. I'm also going to do his little tax badge. I think technically it should be red if I was following the artwork. But it's so tiny that I really don't think you're going to notice that it's orange from a distance. It's going to look red either way. And there we go. That was the fire giant orange. Nice, simple, easy. I then do the first step of layering up some colors on it. So this is Zealot Yellow. I am going to use it on his tax badge that you just saw me painting. I'm also going to scrape it over the model and hopefully I'll find a bit where it's not blurry. There we go. We have focus. I'm just going to go around picking areas that I think either rust might form or some stinky liquid has stuck to him and slowly dripped down his body armor. You got to think all the crevices, anything shadowed areas. He's been in a sewer, maybe something's dripped onto him and then it's starting to pull. I imagine where his wheels are, they're flicking up dirt and ugh. It, it kind of grosses me out just thinking about it. Fecal matter. 
like poops, sewage in general, garbage. It just, ugh. He's digging around in it. He's probably got a cloud of flies following him. Ugh. What a character. I loved him in the comics. He added some very comic humor. And then after we did the yellow stage, we did hardened leather. So this is the lightest brown I've got. And I didn't want it to look brown in any way, shape or form. So I'm actually applying this whilst the yellow paint is still a little bit wet. So they purposely blend in together. This is just going to give certain areas a darker tone. As if something fresh maybe had hit there or a real build up of time. I'm not going to go everywhere that I've got the yellow. Just pick some of the more distinct areas where I want there to be this build up of grime. It's also at this stage that I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm not going to mess. I'm not going to mess. I'm not going to put a brown wash over it. That was my idea. I was going to possibly do Reichland Flesh Shade. Darken him down a little because I was worried he's going to be too bright. But now I'm looking at him. I like that he's bright. I think he looks really cool. So I'm just going to mess around with his base a little bit, as you can now see. I'm going to let him dry overnight. I'll take a look at him again and then I'll take the glamour shots. So I really hope you enjoyed. I know this is a tiny model, but I somehow made a decent length video out of it, which is quite impressive. And until next time. Cheers for watching and make sure you vote in that community poll. Boo boy.